and welcome to my channel this is your girl megan with fit financial planning working out your own financial plan one lesson at a time if you are returning hi and welcome thank you for joining me once again if you are a new subscriber welcome and uh, it's great to have you guys here and yeah i just wanted to say that i appreciate the support and i hope that you guys have been learning um quite a lot from these videos and i hope they have been beneficial to you okay so we are continuing with our terminology so we last stopped at i and i realized that i actually forgot one important term which is um, our income protection term so i'm going to include it in this session so basically income protection is a benefit that you take out as a standalone benefit um, where you protect your income all right so you uh, it's designed to replace your income either due to illness or to disability all right so this is paid as a monthly payment to you and usually you would insure 75 percent of your monthly income your gross income is a um, hundred thousand rand so you will insure seventy five thousand rand of that okay it's seventy five percent of your income and then you also get your temporary income protection and then you also get um, you know different you know benefits like your critical illness if you are with PPS um, or your sickness benefit but I will definitely do a segment on income protection because it's quite an involved um you know segment and i want to explain it properly but basically income protection is number one protecting your income 75 percent of your income and that is paid out on a monthly basis remember it's tax-free and it is paid up until you are 65. it's not whole of life and the reason for that is you would um, earn an income up until retirement okay whether you it's at 55 60 or 65 but the maximum term that you can um, be covered for for income protection is age 65 okay um so when you are obviously you know putting setting up your income protection benefit your premium would increase um either as per C, uh, cpi or at five percent or three percent or and as well as your benefit your benefit also needs to increase so your benefit cannot stay because remember the cost of living increases over time so that seventy five thousand rand that you have insured will not cost the same today as it would in 10 15 or 20 years time so obviously it would have to increase you know Per CPI plus five, CPI plus three percent, so that the cost or the value of your income, you know, matches when you are going to use it at that time because of inflation. Okay, um, so income protection does not cover uh, for retrenchment. It's only if um, you are unable to work due to a disability or a critical or serious illness um then that's when it would kick in okay so it's it doesn't cover for unemployment due to being fired or retrenchment um if you if anything like that happens then you you would need to claim for you with either unemployment insurance fund okay because you contribute to that or towards that every month income protection on the other hand that's got to do with the risk benefits okay income protection cannot be an accelerated benefit it's a standalone benefit so it's a benefit that you purchase on its own okay and income protection is quite expensive because you are obviously insuring your income and the chances of anything happening to you remember the insurance company would have to pay you out a monthly payment up until you're 65 and depending on your age they'll have to pay you out for 10, 15, 20, or even 25 years. And that's a long time. So that's why it gets expensive over time. Okay, but it's a benefit that is um, really necessary and needed. Um, and at times, if you have group risk benefits, it will probably be included in your group risk benefits as well. So just have a look at your policies because you don't want to have income protection with momentum and income protection through group life because only one of them will be able to pay you an income. Remember, insurance is not 
um, meant to enrich you in that way, but it's to it's meant to um, ensure and protect your livelihood. Okay, so um, the only way it would enrich you is if you are leaving like a life cover policy to a dependent or to a beneficiary, but also that as well. It's to combat not you being around to support them. So basically just replacing um, that income when you're not around. Then our next term would be a joint life insurance. Joint life insurance means that husband and wife can be on a policy together. Okay. Um, so it's also important to determine whether the policy is a first death or second death policy. A first death policy pays out on, on the death of the first dying spouse, right? Whereas a second death policy only pays out when both uh, policy holders pass away. All right. And then also you would need to appoint beneficiaries. Okay. And then the, the funds are paid out to the beneficiaries. Okay. So you can have a joint life insurance. Sometimes it is cheaper to have joint life insurance. You just need to, um, you know, compare various quotes, um, whether, you know, having a standalone policy for husband and wife compared to joint life insurance. And also, um, in some instances where uh, couples are married in community of property, then a joint life insurance would be beneficial for that. All right. But if you're out of community of property, um, then it would be better just to have um, also for ease of administration, it's better to have separate policies. Okay. But joint life insurance policies do exist. They are, um, you, you can actually have policies like that. And, um, yeah, you just need to find out from your financial advisor, which um, option would be better for you and your family. Our next term year would be lapsed. So lapsed basically means that when a policy is terminated due to missed payments, so if you don't pay up your premiums, your policy will lapse. All right. But once a policy has lapsed, you can actually um, reinstate the policy only up to a certain um, time. So if, you know, things were a bit rough financially, find out from your insurance company how long after it has lapsed can you reinstate the policy. Sometimes it's within 30 days of lapsing, but you'd have to pay back all the premiums that are outstanding. Our next term here would be your level term insurance. So basically that is just another term um, for uh, term life insurance. So basically where your premiums remain the same for the duration of the contract or of the policy. So it's not like it's, it's not, um, so this is versus age rated. So age rated, a premium pattern versus level premium pattern meaning that your premium pattern stays the same and the death benefit also stays the same, okay, throughout the duration of the policy. So you'd need to determine what the policy is for, uh, the intention of the policy, and also the costs involved, whether having age rated is cheaper than level, comparing your age, comparing, um, you know, the level of cover you need, what the purpose of, you know, this policy is for. Our next term would be a loading. So a loading would just be additional costs to a specific benefit. So it would increase your premium for a specific benefit that caters for greater risk. So when you then, so this would basically be after the medicals are done, then they realize that, oh, you've got cardiovascular conditions, you've got a diabetes condition, or you've got you know some sort of condition that they are worried that you might be a high claimant or your chances of claiming is quite high um also you know if you have pre-existing conditions um you know they might not exclude your cover but they'll say okay we will grant you this cover but instead of it costing you 200 rand for critical illness we will charge you 400 rand so they'll basically increase the premium because of your risk profile your health profile okay and then they will load um your premium instead of actually excluding the specific condition so you are still guaranteed some cover however it will be a little bit more expensive okay um should you feel that um, they are being unfair or unreasonable, then you are able to obviously push back to the underwriters um, and ask the doctor to, you know, 
give um, a detailed explanation as to what your condition is and the underwriters can always relook this i mean i've seen a lot of cases where just minor things were you know loaded on or excluded but with further investigation and assistance from their doctor the insurance company is able to either waive those um, loadings or exclusions and then give the client the cover at normal terms okay so that's why it's beneficial to have a financial advisor to help you look at your policy um, or take out a policy with the financial advisor so that they can you know be that intermediary that helps um, you know if you have issues like that our next term here would be medical so medicals is basically um, when you go through you know it's like full a full medical or full medical underwriting uh, the term that we did in our previous uh, video so basically uh, just to categorize you um, to see what category you fall under whether it's a B or C depending on your health all right um, and then obviously the costs of the medicals are covered by the insurance company um, and if any additional you know specialized tests that need to be done uh, will be done you know with the specialist and they are paid for by the insurance company all right um, and there's also a term called half costs so let's say you have taken out a policy for specific you know benefits and then you want to take out another policy with a different company for you know different benefits but um you've done medicals within six months you can actually ask your new uh, insurance company to ask for the medicals from the previous insurance company um, and then basically that's called half costs where you know this insurance company will pay the other insurance company for you know the information or for the medical so that you don't have to go through uh, to medicals again in case something would have happened to you within the last six months you would have contracted either a virus or your health status had deteriorated within six months so the original medic medicals would still be valid and then they will probably give you similar terms you know due to the rate um, you'd have a similar risk because they're using old medicals but if the medicals are older than six months they cannot use them okay so whatever insurance policy you you're writing up if you've done medicals within six months your new insurance company if you're taking out another policy they can request half costs um, to the previous insurer and they can uh, get the medical requirements from them then you don't have to go through medicals again our next term here would be non-disclosure so basically non-disclosure is like misrepresentation is basically omitting information that is vitally important to your application to your life insurance application and should that happen you will then number one be um the repudiate the claim will be repudiated you know and then you'll have a bad record when you take out new insurance it will ping that on the system of insurers that this person has been has not has, has not disclosed information before and they might uh, refuse cover because on a new application form there's a part where they ask you have you ever been denied or refused cover before by any insurance company and you have to say yes or no if it's yes you need to describe what were the circumstances why did this insurance company deny you cover and why did they um, repudiate any of your claims then you need to be forthcoming with that because if you don't then no insurer will want to take you under their wing and they would not want to insure you so non-disclosure is vitally um, important you need to make sure that you disclose each and everything you you might just need to go back and say guys it was just I scraped my knee it's okay I'm a, don't exclude me for any knee operations it wasn't that hectic you might just need to go back and just elaborate you know on any condition if you feel that the insurance company is is, is you know is being dis it's discriminating against you because of you know your health conditions or your health status or because you've literally told them everything because you know they threaten you with non-disclosure now that you've disclosed everything now they quickly want to penalize you put loadings or give you exclusions you can always push back and um, this pushback then is in the form of a counter offer letter when they send you this counter offer letter before they um, initiate the insurance cover this is where you can see all the loadings exclusions and if you happen if you agree that they're being fair you can sign it and then the policy can start but if you feel that they're being unreasonable then you can always push back to the underwriter and say listen um, it wasn't that bad you know i fell i scraped my knee 
why are you excluding me for any knee operations? Trust me, insurance companies can be quite difficult at times, but it also depends on the underwriter working on your case. Okay, some underwriters can be unreasonable. Our next term here would be an ombudsman. Remember, the ombudsman is there to um, is part of the regulatory body for you know insurers. So um, if you have any grievances, um, grievances with any insurance company, then you can always go to the long-term insurance ombud and the details will be in the description below. If you feel that your financial advisor hasn't been helpful, the insurance company hasn't been helpful, um, discriminative, or for whatever reason that you feel that you know you need to raise it with the ombud, then you are more than welcome to do so. All right. Our next term here would be your occupation. Obviously, your occupation will determine, is one of the determining factors of your risk profile when it comes to insurance um, policies and insurance um, uh, or taking out insurance. So someone who works as a surgeon um, would have a different rating to someone who works as a minor, um, you know, underground. Um, obviously, the level of um, education required is different. The level of skill is different as well as the level of you know how hazardous the occupation is if someone is working in an air-conditioned office like me as an administrator i mean what is the risk you know compared to um, someone going underground and mining so our risk profiles are going to be different our premiums are going to be different because of our occupation status all right someone who drives a lot around a lot who is 90 percent on the road or a truck driver then obviously the rate is going to be different than someone like me who's sitting in an office all day all i do is i drive from home to work and work to home and that's it and then i drive around on weekends unlike someone who drives for a living your chances of getting into an accident and claiming are much higher so the premium is going to be different let's say same age uh same Everything else, just our occupation is different. Our premiums are going to be different because of our occupation. So that's something you need to be aware of when you take out an insurance policy. Okay, and you'll see all of this on your quote. Our next term here would be your quote. So obviously a quote is just um, a document that gives you a general idea of how much insurance will cost you. Remember, quotes are not cast in stone. So a quote might say, um, this is how much we will charge you. So it's basically giving you a rough idea. But after medicals are done, after you fill out the application form, you know, more material information comes in, then the underwriters are able to properly um, risk you. And they might find that actually your risk is much lower than this quote. So your premium will then probably be 100 Rand cheaper than the quote was. Or after everything has been done, they find out that, listen, you are high risk and you've got loadings on this and you've got exclusions on that, we are actually going to increase your premium by 100 rand because you're high risk. So a quote just gives you a general idea of how much it could, it could cost, but it's not cast in stone. Um, and then one thing you can also look at on the quote is the commission that's gonna be earned by the financial advisor. Um, this is where you can see how much commission they're gonna earn. Um, yeah, and then also it's, it's very important to get comparative quotes. So you just don't want to look at one quote alone. Look at your financial advisor needs to give you at least three quotes from three different providers. That will give you an idea on the rating um, and the costs of each different provider because depending on your budget, you wouldn't want to go with the most expensive one. If you're on a tight budget, then you'd need to go with an insur insurance company that is suitable to your budget. So having at least three quotes to compare for will give you an idea on what the market or the insurance market you know thinks of you as a risk profile and then you're able to make your decision based on that going forward okay guys thank you so much for joining me we're going to leave it here i hope that this uh, was informative remember none of my videos constitute financial advice i'm just a girl who's here to give you information on these products and to show you how they work so if you have any questions please um let me know in the description below or send me an email and i'd be i'd love to help you and i'd love to engage with you so thank you so much for joining me we will continue um our 
terminology in our next video and i think that will be the final video we will wrap it up and then move on to the next segment so thank you so much for joining me it's been great having you take care and god bless